Well, hello, good people and Eagle fans. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody um, is having a great Monday. It's definitely a lot better than what it could have been, and it's been a trying day. It's 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 crazy. You would have thought we were a lot we lost with the amount of hate and venom I've gotten from people, but I. Tell tell you what's funny because we're going to be live streaming um in about an hour for the uh monday night game kansas city uh versus versus new orleans and um i just set up the stream and lo and behold logan motorsport is the first one in there he's literally i literally started this got the stream set three minutes ago and he's instantly popped up in there and says hello everyone you know you eagle fans complain about me and everything else but you sure can't seem to make it without me you literally live there's no cowboy fans here right now they know it doesn't start till eight but literally eagle fans are right here and i'll be honest with you for some of you 49er fans that literally take the time out to email me to, you know, tell me to tamp it down, fat boy and everything else, and uh, go through and tell us that you guys have been three and five to start seasons and made it to the NFC Championship game, this, that, and the other. You know, I don't care. I don't care. My Cowboys at the current time have a three and two record. We won yesterday, and I'm going to enjoy that. You 49er fans, well, you, you deal with losing at home to the Cardinals, okay? You're divi a division rival. All right, so be that as it may, we get a win when people literally said we had no chance. If you looked at the people from ESPN, pretty much all you saw was black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. You didn't see anybody picking America's team. You didn't see that happening. But the Cowboys win, and all of a sudden, lo and behold, you know, we overrated, you know, the Steelers. They're not really that good, and yada, yada. Okay, all right, fine. Be that as it may. But here's where it gets to be crazy. So some people think we have a Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb problem, okay? And, you know, they're trying to take what was said on the sidelines um, as CeeDee Lamb is cussing out Dak and saying that he's a garbage-ass quarterback and everything else. This is after the interception. And so let, let's take a look at, you know, for you lip readers out there, I can't remember exactly what people were trying to say um, that, he, that he said. But he's saying jump ball for jump ball. Jump ball. Jump ball. Because... CD, and then they're saying, oh, well, Dak wouldn't even look at him. Dak is looking down at the tablet, looking at what's going on, trying to figure out what happened, where, who was who, where the miscommunication was, because that's what happened on it. And Dak Prescott even went um, as far as to go through and say, you know, you go through your progressions and your reads and things, and, you know, we just weren't on the same page. Just weren't on the same page. That happened sometimes. That happened a lot with Kellen Moore and the combination routes. That season that we had uh, 15 interceptions for Dak, uh, mind you, in the one season, um, that um, that season, those combination routes attributed a lot to those interceptions. But be that as it may, um, people are kind of saying are, are souring on C.D. Lamb, and now you know, of course, the Cowboys will jump on the bandwagon of the latest hottie which is Jalen Tolbert. I literally had some people saying Jalen Tolbert needs to be the number one receiver. Uh, I'm not quite ready to do that right now, but I think he does need to be the number two receiver. I think him being younger, I think all of the work that he worked with Dak Prescott in training camp, that's paid dividends. And this is where you have to say, maybe Dak and CD aren't on the same page because they didn't get that much practice time together. Now, see, I want you to understand something. The Cowboys played yesterday. Today is basically treatment day in, in meetings. Tomorrow is the player's day off. Then they start practicing Wednesday. Wednesday, okay? And basically Wednesday and Thursday are the two big practices. Friday, typically, it's Mike McCarthy's is recovery day. Saturday is a walkthrough. And then Sunday you play. There's not a whole lot of time to get practice work and get cohesion during the week. And so when you miss all that time in training camp, it can be that you're on a different page. And I think that's a lot of what's happening with CD and Dak. But there's nothing there 
with the two of them. And what people will look and infer is say, oh, well, after that, Dak Prescott didn't go to CD anymore, you know, until late in the game. Well, sometimes you're going to take all of the interest. You're going to take the number one guy. They're going to sometimes double team you and stuff. And that's where other guys have to produce. We always look at it with, say, Micah Parsons on the defense. And, you know, what is Micah Parsons doing? Okay, Micah Parsons getting doubled. Well, that means the other guy on the other side should be feasting because Micah's taking on double teams. And this is exactly what you want. And so people that are out there questioning C.D. Lamb and whether or not he wants to win, I'm going to say, look at this. Look what C.D. Lamb does on here, okay? Little policeman work on this pass play. Terrific veteran guard in the Boom. Cowboys. Prescott throws. Okay. CD Lamb, you see, just not look. CD Lamb is up there. I'll back it up a little bit. Look, CD Lamb, right's going to come in your corner, is going to block. Look at that. The guy out of the way to the point where he doesn't even see Ferguson. He does, he's looking downfield. He doesn't even see Ferguson running down there. And then, dude is completely lost. And then, blocks another guy. Because of CeeDee Lamb, wait a minute, look at this. If CeeDee Lamb doesn't block this guy, maybe that guy gets him here at the 27. Instead, Ferguson goes all the way down to the 15. Look at that. So, let, make no mistake about this. C.D. Lamb and, you know, his youth and his exuberance wants to win. Wants to win. You know, you don't see too many wide receivers doing two blocks in a, on a play. But see, that's the difference of winning and losing. And I'm going to say, you know, for everybody that's trying to make a big stink that C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott, that there's a problem there, you know, you're going to have times when you don't have a great game. There's going to be times where Dak's going to struggle, C.D.'s going to struggle, and hopefully somebody else picks up the slack. And that's what happened last night. The Cowboys, that was a team win. Dak had some, you know, struggles. CD had some struggles, but Jalen Tolbert stepped up. Ferguson stepped up. You know, a lot of people came together to get a win, and I couldn't be happier about that. So let's try not to make anything where there's not something. Okay? All right, good people. Um, I got to go uh, caulk this shower. You know, I, I stay busy, y'all. I, I literally I just I cooked dinner. I ate after we worked on this roof. And now I'm going to go ahead and seal up the shower. We put up, I put up shower doors on Saturday night. And I need to seal around the, 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 the stops and stuff for it with clear caulk. And, um, yeah, then I'll get ready to live stream in 50 minutes. Whew. There just ain't enough hours in the day. Just ain't enough hours in the day. And uh, just remember, good people. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out.